economy. Roads blocked in Mena as residents protest high living costs in, in Niger State and Kano State. I am Bola Oba and this is Plus Politics. Residents of MENA, the Niger state capital, blocked major roads in protest against the high cost of living. The protest which occurred in Niger and Kano state simultaneously had women and youths demanding better government efforts to address the rising food costs and poor, uh, and poor security situation. Deputy Governor of Niger State, Yakubu Gaba, expressed his understanding of the hardship faced by families and stated that the government is working to reduce living costs and address the consequences of the removal of petrol subsidies. I think the issue of rising prices is of concern to uh, um, the government and everybody in Nigeria. And then the, some of the major steps which I can point out that are being taken to address this issue, because it's an issue of demand and supply, and a lot of emphasis has been placed on increasing agricultural production in particular. Um, uh, the president has intervened in that sector to provide grains, to provide fertilizer to farmers, to bring additional acreage, rice, wheat, uh, uh, maize, wheat, and cassava um, under additional acreage, additional production in order to increase uh, uh, the output and thereby bring down prices and that will help bring down inflation. And of course, we're in the middle of the dry season farming. We're looking forward to a good dry season harvest that will help to ameliorate food prices in particular and the price level in Nigeria. His Excellency received a report this morning that yes, there is a group of youths and women that are uh, protesting about the issue of uh, economic hardship. And uh, already the council is on the uh, process. He directed me, the advisor political and the commissioner for local governments to go and address the youths because the issue they come up with is about issue of hunger. And already in the one of the, 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 the items of discussion in the council is about issue how do you question the economic hardship of the entire state? And how do you relate with the federal government to ensure that yes, some, uh, some policy that will come with human face, that our people will not be in language of this added poverty. So we have gone there and we have addressed the youths that actually we are discussing to see how we can bring issue of palliative around the state, not only a segment of people that are protesting and I want to tell you that, yes, uh, not since some few days to come, the state government will see interaction to ensure that, yes, we elevate the issue so that uh, this protest will not continue. We are Democrats, and the same people, we come on board by people's will. So we cannot just truncate their feelings. We just have to do something to bring circle to the people. In response to the protest, the All Progressive Congress APC has alleged that opposition parties have resorted to instigating unsuspecting youths to protest following the protest that rocked Mena, the capital of Niger State, and Kano State on Monday over the airship in the country. The National Publicity Secretary of the party, Feli Smoka, in a statement issued on Tuesday, maintained that the protest in Mena and Kano on Monday were the manifestation of the plot Quote, in its iron desperation to portray all the all progressive Congress APC led administration as underperforming, opposition parties have resorted to instigating unsuspecting young people to protest in the streets of some major cities. Quotation continues. The protest in Mena and Kano on Monday were the manifestation of this devious and unpatriotic plot that the protest happened simultaneously in both cities is not coincidental. Quotation continues. It bears the bold stamp of an orchestrated and coordinated effort to instigate unrest and undermine the government. This machinery opposition tactic is clear and present threat to public peace and national security. Unquote. 
He said, joining us to look at this is public affairs analyst and former president of the Nigerian German Business Group, Joe Femi Daguro, and chairman, Forum of Northern State Civil Society Organizations, Ambassador Ibrahim Waiya, and also joining us is the Executive Director, Center for Social Justice, Mr. Eze Onyekore. Gentlemen, welcome to Post Politics. Thank you. Uh, Mr. D Mr. Daguro? Yes, please. Are you there, Mr. Daguro? Sure. Yes, I'm with you. Uh, how would you want to respond to the fact that uh, some citizens, some fellow citizens, felt so outdone by, irrespective of what may be the allegation of the of the spokesperson of the APC, they felt so outdone by that they had to come on the streets to protest uh, about their hardship. What was the take of that? Let's look at it from the point of agony and pain. Um, it's not only the people in the north facing this problem. The Nigerians are facing the problem wherever they are, and uh, they are expressing it. Uh, maybe not all of them have gone onto the street, but if you have a close relationship with people in all uh, corners of Nigeria, m most people, most Nigerians are complaining of one thing or the other, as are today. And we have to understand it. Uh, the political parties, uh, the ruling parties, they will always, you know, accuse uh, the opposition party. It's a natural thing for that to happen all over the world. You remember in Zimbabwe, in, the old, in those days, uh, the president will always blame Blair for everything that happened in Zimbabwe. So, um, it, it is not new that uh, APC, we accuse the opposition, and when PDP was there, they were accusing uh, APC and all the opposition parties as well. So that is a natural thing to happen. But the most important thing is for us to look into the situation. What is causing this protest? What is causing the anger? What is causing the pain? We all know that a lot of things have gone uh, within the last uh, few months. People expected that the subsidy removal would bring a kind of uh, so-called, a kind of relief to their pain because they supported the government. They, they knew that it, it's going to be painful. And I have said it in a couple of places that it's not going to be immediate. Uh, this thing will take some time before we begin to see the, the effect, the good effect of the removal of the subsidy. But the pain is this. Uh, when you see the lawmakers, when you see some government officials, uh, their lifestyle, you begin to wonder, are we not in the same country? And lately, when you see the amount of billions that has been, uh, you know, mismanaged or stolen, whichever way you look at it, it gives a lot of people concern. We are in the same country where all these things are happening, and some cannot afford to buy uh, bread. Uh, you know, loaf of bread right now is stolen. Uh, the slices cost about 1,700 in some places and 1,500. What was uh, some time ago, uh, 500 naira. So, you see, even orange juice and all those things that people would drink. This has gone up three times. So it's a lot of pain and the people are feeling it. So whether you like it or not, it is not until when position party we sponsor anybody i think this is that pain has got to that level but i just want the government to know that this should not be allowed to spread around all of the state the pain is not only in the north it's in the okay. west south I, I, east I, wherever I, I, you I, go, people are complaining uh Barrister Eze Oyekwere, uh, it, is almost, it is almost certain that the opinion of your colleague uh, may not be unique to him. Many Nigerians out there uh, perhaps believe that government is profligate, that the people in government are living ostentatiously or parading themselves in a manner quite inconsistent with the with the very dire economic circumstance that uh, majority of Nigerians find themselves, uh, it's ironic indeed that if on the one hand, the conducts of those who are in government uh, don't seem to reflect the hardship that the majority of citizens are feeling, it's even ironic that the seeming, the seeming lack of handle 
of the economic situation, especially the, the uh, 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 ravaging inflation, the hyperinflation, uh, is worsening uh, people's condition. How would you, where would you want to start from, uh, Barrister Onyekwe? All right, thank you for that question. As you can very well see, that the position of the spokesperson of the APC, I would rather say with utmost respect, is quite delusional, in the sense that it is evident before all Nigerians that the conditions of living has degenerated so badly that people are finding it difficult to meet the basic needs of feeding themselves and taking care of their families. And for the spokesperson of the APC simply to believe that those who are so hungry, those who are poorly housed, those who can't transport themselves to their places of work, will need an opposition party to remind them to protest against injustice, against insensitivity of the present government. That's why I say it's quite delusional. I don't want to agree with the last person who said it will take some time for us to begin to feel the you know, the positive impact of oil subsidy removal. That's not true. We, we are not paying 670 Naira. We are paying 190, 180. Suddenly, you jacked it up. And the government is now making about 400 and something Naira per liter of oil sold. Now, in the past, under Abacha, who we have talked so badly about, when he removed a little cover from oil subsidy, he set up the PTDF. And we saw what PTDF achieved, rightly or wrongly. When the much maligned Jonathan removed a little of the first subsidy after so much protest, he set up Shopee. And we could see what Shopee achieved, whether you said there was corruption in it or not. Now you are getting 470 naira, 480 naira per liter. Where is that money going to? It's not here marked anywhere. All you are seeing is increasing allocation to states, and the governors are stealing the money. All you are seeing is increasing resources at the federal level, and the amount of money the federal, the, maybe the National Assembly is taking, is bloated up from 190 million, billion naira, the executive proposed, to 344. From about 170 for the judiciary, it's like they're bribing them, to over 300 billion. And you see all kinds of recurrent expenditure blowing up in the 2024 budget so that money that was taken away from the people that the people used to enjoy we had expected that you have earmarked it in specific sectors education health agriculture transportation where it will alleviate the conditions of life of the common people rather you simply took the money away from the people aggregated it at the center and at the state level, we are top level politicians are simply stealing the money. And they are the ones responsible for why uh, the value uh, of the Easter. is depreciating vis-a-vis the -vis dollar. Each time they share that money, uh, they uh, go hello, to foreign uh, Hello, Barrister, on your query. to dollar. I'm not going to play uh, politics uh, with hello. you. Hello? Yes. Hello? Uh, the, you know, uh, yes, I'm the, hearing you. The federal government may want to claim that, you know what, as a result of the removal of subsidy and the, and the a nominal increase in the amount of revenue garnered, that, they have in, that the disp dispensations uh, to the states have, uh, uh, you know, have increased, that the, gov that the president took the pain to give two, two billion naira each to, to every governor to find a program to, to uh, provide succor for the hardship that the people may be facing to alleviate it, that uh, they have, uh, uh, okay, that is seemingly moribund at this juncture as a result of the circumstance uh, of the of the former uh, you know suspended minister, but how would you just before I go to before I go to Ambassador Ibrahim Waya, how would you respond to that uh, retort? You know, that just reaction the lines of the federal government. 
Yes, that is simply peanuts. That you give two billion to a governor to respond to the massive poverty in a state of over five to seven to ten million people, you cannot scratch the soft sand. Of course, you knew that the governor did not apply. What happened to the savings that accrued to the federal government? It would have made sense if the federal government is saying, oh, gas is cheaper to power public transportation. By now, the federal government should have been able to process not less than four to 5,000 public mass transit buses running on gas, which will help to reduce the cost of transportation, indirectly the cost of food. By now, the federal government will have put much more money into basic health care so that people can afford to go to the hospitals, the poorest of the poor, without having oh, okay, to... Okay, I'll come back, no I'll come back, I'll come back to you soon. I'll come back to you later. Now, uh, let, let me go to Ambassador right. Brian Waya. Ambassador, you are based in yes. one of the states where people, some people thought they had had enough and they went on the street. And the spokesperson of the APC is now uh, insinuating that uh, people coming on the street uh, may be a kind of gunboat opposition strategy. I, I wouldn't want to put you in a, in a partisan political fray, but from the feelers that you had from those who went out yesterday in Kano, would you would you think it was it was driven by partisan partisan uh, motive? Well, um, it's quite really unfortunate that at this time around in this country we still play this kind of dirty politics, dirty politics in the sense that we still are doing things that are really misleading. Uh, there are situations when politics. It's over. It should be over. There are situations when issues to do with election campaign activities should be over. But just all the time for governance. When you're talking about time for governance, then you are talking about everybody. Whether somebody is a partisan or not partisan, the responsibility of providing a care that he deserves as a citizen is really on the shoulder of a leader who has been elected. President Tinubu was elected by Nigerians, uh, regardless of party affiliation, regardless of partisan sentiment and other things like that. And he got both from all part of the country. So at that time, there was nothing like party uh, partisan uh, sentiment. It's now that because some people are just only agitated for uh, the right thing to be done. Uh, nobody would actually argue on what is actually happening in this country. Everybody has really acknowledged the fact that there is really high cost of living, all over inflation, more than 30% now. Um, the the cost of uh, things going high all the time, no any price control, nothing like that. People are also uh, being subjected to unpre unprecedented uh, difficulty in the country all over. And everybody is feeling that. And somebody, also people have decided to come and show their own anger with a view to draw the attention of the, the president himself and other people who are stakeholders, especially the governors, to do something that is uh, needful. And somebody will just only be speaking a long partisan sentiment is unfortunate. I'm not really happy with this one comment. But one thing I want to clear is that those people that were actually protesting in Kano, they were not jobless people, mostly our business community, because uh, even the governor had a meeting with them yesterday. Most of them, they are trade businessmen or women, only that they understood that the situation or what is actually going on in the country is unfortunate. Even though they are into business and they have a means of earning an income and which really they are all engaged. So they are productive members of the society. They are not the kind of people that you can think that they could be influenced by anybody and somebody could just only induce them into coming on the street to protest for anything. They are genuinely championing a cause which everybody should key into that and everybody should really be mindful in the country is quite really uh, unprecedented because uh, with the uh, removal of the force subsidies... Ambassador, let me, go, let me go to your colleague. Let, let me go to your colleague on a very important issue. Um, yes. uh, uh, please let me go to your colleague. Uh, the, 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 Mr. Daguro, 
Uh, he used to be a chieftain of the Nigerian uh, German or German uh, Nigerian German Chamber of Commerce, and we had to. Germany. Hello, sir. Nigerian German Business Group in Germany. Oh, Nigerian German Business Group. Um, we have had two administrations now touting the fact that Siemens and the German government, indeed, before the incumbent, the incumbent German Chancellor came in, uh, the former uh, uh, Chancellor the, and the Buhari administration, they've been touting that the German government and Siemens would help us attend to this power issue. What feelers can, can somebody like you give a public on the reasonableness of that expectation? Or is it what is seemingly, I don't want to sound cynical, is it what is seemingly the the tendency of Nigerian governments now to just give information that will sweeten or make people happy without any good substance to it? Well, uh, like you said, you see, every country as at this moment has a kind of a problem or crisis, whether you like it or not. Even in Germany, we have one crisis. Uh, uh, most countries around the world have uh, one crisis or the other, and they are trying to resolve it or solve it themselves. But it's unfortunate that little things here, yeah, we quickly run out and we are looking for people to help us to solve our problems. And uh, most of the problems we can solve ourselves. But you see, just like the gentleman was saying, it is not as if, uh, I will still come back to your question now, when you remove subsidy, planning must have been made. A lot of plans must have been made to be able to determine how to spend the money, how to allocate it to all those areas he has mentioned. But I think there was no planning, number one. And when this was done, we couldn't come together to be able to identify those places. Yes, there was mistake made in some of these trophy and all those things, but there are things that are good and uh, things that are good should be looked into and make to work. We don't have statistics. We don't have data to make things work in this country. So when you are talking about social uh, benefits and we do, we can't really do that. So giving the state government money or local government money, where will this money go? We have to be more transparent. I, may have, I read, gave us some billions and now we can't trace the billions. You are reading in the country, in the newspapers, that if even the judiciary, billions are missing. So a lot of all this missing money, where do they go to? The bankers have to be called to order. So a lot of things have to be done to make Nigeria work. We are Nigerians. You see, coming back to when you say Siemens will come here, Siemens is not coming to just do Father Christmas. Siemens is coming on a business level. They are prepared to work because it's going to fetch their money and they are going to, it's, it's a profitable business. But the point is this, how are we ready? How are we prepared? Siemens, from what I understand, they are ready to come in, but we have to do our bits. Are we doing our bits? We have seen lately a lot of issues with the Mambila project. Till today, we are still we are still prosecuting. We are still looking for where the mistake comes from. So we'll continue to do all these things. In another four years, we may not be able to get it right. So let's do one thing. I've said it. Let's do one thing and get it right. If we want to do the electricity issue, let's confront it while we are doing all the things and make sure that is done right. If the roads, listen, even we, when we have electric vehicle, are they not going to fly the roads? Are the roads good for that? Where will they recharge these electric uh, vehicle batteries? So a lot of things have to, we can't just come out and say, we're doing this, we're doing that, or we want to do this. And we reassure you, the people are tired of this. And that is why I said, we have to. They want to hear from the president. They want to hear from their leaders. They want to know where we are, where we are going. They know where we are coming from, and they know where we are. We are now having pains. So Siemens has promised this is what we can do. And now what is disturbing it, what is delaying it? But don't forget, we have a lot of debts we have to pay. Don't forget, we, don't, we might not have enough money to back up some of these things we have promised the people. So a lot of things have to be really put in order. And that is why today you see that most businesses are collapsing and most businesses will close up because most of our raw materials, most of our uh, things we need, even in the manufacturing sector, we have to import them. And we cannot import some of these things when we continue to have 
policies that are not consistent. If you say today, this is the rate you want to charge, tomorrow you are changing the rate. And then that will disturb the foreign investors coming. And then we will not have direct foreign invest investment coming into the country as we have uh, planned and promised the people that we are bringing investors. Investors don't want to come into this kind of area. And then you have to look into the security side of it. So the economic issue is there. The security aspect of it is there. So many issues. And, you know, the only thing now that we have to do is to make sure that we don't promise what we cannot do. Let's do what we can and let's stop all these uh, aggrandizement and the, the waste of uh, little resources that we have. And let's begin to look into corruption seriously. It is not good enough for us now to begin to steal the money that we have. Why should anyone be stealing the money at this point in time? The one that has been stolen in the past, let's bring them in. But please, let's stop stealing what we have now. We shouldn't be spend stealing any money for now and anyone caught stealing nigeria money right now should be properly prosecuted within a short period of time and let's send signal to others who might be planning to steal or who are already stealing and they should know what is going on unless we begin to be transparent uh, uh, mr uh, let, let me let, let me go to uh, uh um i i would suppose that at the exchange rate at which the subsidy was reduced, uh, was removed, and given the reality, the, the reality of the exchange rate that prevails now, uh, it is almost like uh, the subsidy is just an unnecessary permitting measure meted out to Nigerians because uh, it is somewhat functionally hollow at this juncture given the rate of given the rate of uh, Naira Naira's exchange rate to, to the dollar. Uh, how would you respond to that and many other and any other thing that you want to opine on? Economic reforms should be taken as a holistic package. It's not just enough to say you've removed the fuel subsidy, okay, or that you have floated the Naira. The expectation was that in doing these things, you were first of all going to increase the source of any foreign exchange. And our immediate source of any foreign exchange is from the oil sector. We all knew that in the Buari era, the NPC was not performing. We are not meeting our open quota. Two things were partly responsible. Either money was being stolen at an aggravated level at NNPC, or that there was gross negligence of the performance of duties. So I had expected that the president would have removed that leadership and considered a new one with a new capacity. Because whether it's stealing or whether it is uh, uh, gross negligence, none of them is good enough. So today we have a situation where we can't even meet our open quota. The high dangote refinery, which we hope that by the time it starts operation, that it will help us reduce the price of oil or save foreign exchange. Today, we can't even supply crude oil to the dangote refineries. Dangote is importing crude oil from the United States. So what we will have gained by stopping the importation of refined petroleum products, we will lose it again when dangote has to import crude. And we are still not meeting our open quota. So it is not a, que a question of somebody sitting as a president or somebody sitting as a minister of petroleum or finance minister. You have to act that role. And President Tinubu has no business reserving the petroleum ministry for himself. He's too busy. He doesn't have the capacity. And the other people he appointed around him, everybody knows they don't have the capacity. Forget the arrogance. Forget the grandstanding. So as far as I'm concerned, we need to reject a lot of things. Appoint right people in right positions have a more positive and honest disposition towards the economy. And by the time we do this, stop oil theft. Imagine we are selling 2 million barrels of crude oil a day or 2.5 million barrels. It will help us earn more dollars to show up the value of the national currency rather than the currency on a free fall. So as far as I'm concerned, there's a lot of issues around mobility of volition of the present leadership. They have to climb down from their high horse, address Nigerians, acknowledge their fail failures, and seek help. Get Nigerians who are competent and who have honesty 
And who, are, who have capacity to begin to address the fundamental defects in this economy is not beyond us. And they must make sure that whatever savings we've done from oil subsidy removal are properly channeled to the right sectors. Uh, let, let, let me go now to Ambassador Ibrahim Waya. Uh, Ambassador, as the Chairman Forum of Northern States Civil Society Organizations, uh, I, I think you are better placed to, to intimate our public with the dire economic situation and the very palace security uh, scenario of Northern Nigeria. These are two major, major, I, I don't even want to use the kind of words uh, flirting with my tongue, but it is almost, it is almost inevitable that if people in the Southwest, the South-South and the Southeast complain, given the situation in the North now, uh, so some of us are not surprised that protests took place in Kano and Mena. Although the spokesperson of the APC believes that it was uh, politically orchestrated. How would you want to describe the situation in the North now, Ambassador? Hello? Okay. Uh, okay, let me, go, let me go back to uh, uh, Mr. Daguro. Mr. Daguro, we have a situation where... Um, it is almost, it is almost certain that the government needs to review some of the strategies. The government needs to come clean and stop, uh, stop pretending as though they, they, they have the undo. Hello, can you hear me? Is that, is that Mr. Dago? No. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, 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 hello? Hello, can you hear me? Uh, is that Ambassador uh, Ibrahim Waya? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, yes, I'm back. Okay, uh, uh, okay, uh, okay. Did you hear the question I asked you before Before the connection went, uh, went down? Hello? Okay, let, let me come to his rescue there. Uh, I think the most important thing we have to begin to look like uh, what uh, the gentleman before me spoke now is, like I said, we have a problem at hand. Before the president came in, uh, he knew there was a problem. The, the, the only thing that he wouldn't be able to say much of this problem because he belongs to the same party, APC, right? We acknowledge the problem. We give him the power to continue to do what is right. So doing what is right, the central bank came in and, you know, you can't float the, the, uh, the, the Naira or the exchange rate when you don't have anything to back it up. Even other uh, foreign... Uh, uh, Go, go ahead, Mr. Daguro. I'll go back to Ambassador so, later. Other foreign agents and foreign uh, uh, groups, they said it, that we don't have the capacity to manage such a thing. So when we pretend that we can do all these things, it is not going to be good for all of us. And that is what I'm saying. And I support uh, the gentleman that, look, we cannot continue to deceive ourselves. Look, even a child, a primary school child, a pupil, they understand the economy of Nigeria that is hurting them. The most people cannot eat again properly and the cost okay. is let, just let right. Me, let me quickly go to let me quickly go to the cost of ordinary biscuit Indomie. This cost has gone up. People let, cannot let, let me quickly people go to Ambassador, Ambassador Ibrahim Waya now in, in, in Kano. Ambassador yes. uh, as one who relates with civil society uh, civil society chieftains across the north I was asking you what is the situation economically and security wise of the North now? Well, actually, you know very well, I think I'm going by the statistics we have gotten, the national statistics, which has already been reviewed by 
the National Bureau of Statistics. You know very well that the North is at the disadvantage position uh, economically because uh, the 134 or 37 million Nigerians that have that are facing multidimensional poverty, 65% uh, of that uh, total amount is in the north. So this is to tell you that how terribly the economic situation in the north is, and it has already indicated the number of the uh, states that are so much uh, a lot of the citizens from particular state in the northwest and in the northeast and some few in the north central that are facing so much poverty. So this is to tell you that honestly speaking, we feel the impact more than the southern part of the country. And this is this may not really be unconnected with probably some of the national uh, policy that are really being implemented or uh, formulated by the federal government that there is actually inequality when it comes to response to certain things. That is why we're talking about even the policy that the federal government introduced of reason of relocating some of the uh, department of the CVN and the rest of that. We oppose the idea. Why? Simply because economy cannot work in a nation where there is so much concentration of all economic activities in it, just only one particular region of the country. It's not done. If you look at 80% or 90% of the uh, commercial banks we have in this country are all concentrated in the southwest. Then how do you expect financial inclusion to work? How do you expect people to participate economically in the economic activities in their own country? In the north completely, you cannot have access to just only a facility, a simple facility of 10 million naira. You cannot have that. But in the south, one can have access to billions of money. Despite the fact that a lot of businesses uh, going in the north and with the budget uh, money. So that is actually the imbalance. So until and unless when this imbalance is uh, actually uh, rectified. Uh, uh, yes. Let me, uh, without, want, without saying or contradicting your your submission, the irony for some of us is that the greatest asset of any society on the face of the earth, or the greatest asset of any country on the face of the earth, is the human capital element. The, the and, people. And that will be only... Uh, I'm, I'm coming, sir. I'm, I'm, environment I'm, to make it productive. I'm coming, I'm coming. Let that, me, let is, that is a caveat. There is a caveat there. That is only if you decide to make it productive. Let, let, me, let, let, me, let me finish my question. Let me finish my question. Before you, okay, you, okay, you okay. have ample time to... So I'm thinking... Okay. It is obvious that the federal government is failing everybody. I'm going to excuse this. Yeah. I fully agree with you on that. But yes. what are the measures? What are the strategies... What are the policies that civil society people like you are engaging the government, especially at the level of the states, to impact the quality of human capital development as in skills acquisition, micro, micro enterprise empowerment? Because we have to start from a point. And we know that the federal government, I know, I, I fully agree with you. In fact, I am one, uh, 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 Ambassador, Ambassador, let me be very, very honest with you. I am one who believes that the so-called excuse that some people are giving, that uh, they should move something to Lagos. Lagos is congested. Apart from the fact, apart from the fact that it will choke traffic, it will increase the cost of putting children in school because all these people will come and put their children in school. Apart from the, look, Mutalam Muhammad International Airport, MMA 2. Anytime yes. from, I, I have, I, I have one of my businesses around that area. I have a training school at Naco. Yes. Anytime yes. from 2.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. If you really want to move between MMA2 to International Airport, you can spend up to two and a half hours for a journey that should, that should take less than five minutes. So, but having said that, what are, are the governors of the North doing to harness this, this powerful resource? 
I, 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 it's just no more than two hours that I just came up for a meeting. I have been in a meeting for two days in Abuja, and part of the meeting is to discuss generally about the issue of the insecurity in the North, particularly in relation to economic activities, in relation to poverty and underdevelopment. And we were able all to analyze everything. And at our conclusion, we all understood that most of the issues to do with the issue of the insecurity, one of the key driver of that is the poverty, is the underdevelopment. The underdevelopment, the poverty that has already been inflicted on the people by those people in government is one of the cause or is one of the leading driver of the insecurity. Because people are redundant. People are not doing anything. Well, people have empowered them, have enriched themselves with the, with the public money. So one of the things that we engaged the EFCC, if I could remember, bad words were Aaron Abdul Rashid Bauer administration or leadership rather, we engage in that if we really need to be serious in in this country, apart from the economic policy that we really need to introduce in the economy, which is actually going to be realistic to us because we are just only a consumer country, not a manufacturing country. We only consume. We don't expect anything. So you cannot really in any way expect anything good to come to Nigeria. But one thing we can take advantage and leverage on that is the looted money that is in the hands of the looters. We take advantage of that. Let us be very, very frank. Let us be very practical. If really we want to fix the economy, the money that is in the hands of the looters, the public looters, is enough to turn around the economy. Okay, of this okay, let me go to your government. Let me go yes. to your colleague uh, because uh, we, we are in a democracy and uh, it's not somewhat easy to just uh, line up the looters and strip them of their loot. Uh, the rule of law and uh, the criminal justice system uh, are there. To, to, be, to, to be used, uh, and these guys have enormous resources. When the state is presenting uh, second-rated lawyers, they will go and get senior advocates of Nigeria because they've got deep pockets. Okay, that is the same problem that way, that is dragging us back. Okay, let me go to a lawyer. Yes, a let me go to a lawyer. A child would be sent to uh, okay, I, I'll and come back to you. I'll come back to you. Let me go to Barrister. Onyekwere is a conscientious uh, a, a patriot who has always consistently over the years I've known him, spoken to uh, the need for good governance, uh, spoken to the need for accountability, especially economic ac accountability in governance, and somebody who believes that uh, we must tidy our policies to, to get good results. Barrister Yekwe, uh, 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 how does someone like you for all the years that you've been out there, you know, calling for good governance, calling for things to be done right, especially in, in the economic uh, sphere, or how, how does somebody like you feel now? And what would be the ideas that you want to put on the table? Because I know you are not a mourner and you are not a whaler. You, are, you would rather trade on suggestions. What would be the ideas? Because people are looking at the central bank governor, but the central bank governor does not have a manufacturing outfit. He does not produce dollar. He only, you know, is like a banker to the government. And like my banker now, if my economic situation is bad, I have to readdress my economic situation. Is not my banker. So what we do want to tell the government about a fiscal policy. A fiscal policy that will make Nigeria more productive than the, all this tinkering that they are doing with Forex and this and that will amount to nothing. Your, your response, please, Barrister. It is beyond fiscal policy. It is a holistic approach to governance, which will involve one fiscal policy, it will involve monetary policy, it will involve trade policy, industrial policy, and a whole rush of all other policies, whether it's in education, health. And they have to be consistently packaged in such a way to deliver results. I've told you first that to float your currency, you need to get a new consistent source of revenue. And for now, the oil and gas sector appears to be our immediate hope. And the best way to do it is to increase production once we increase production with the price of crude oil hovering over around 70 something to 80, we are going to get more revenue in terms of dollars, which will help us to show up the value of the currencies. That's the first one. 
The second one, which is quite important, is about security. There is no way people will not complain they cannot feed themselves if people cannot go to their farms. If those who have already planted cannot harvest, and if those who are harvested cannot even add value to it because of insecurity, the news coming out of Nigeria since the end of the year, whether it is Jaws or other parts of Nigeria in the Southwest or in Casina, is an insecure nation. And no investor will bring his resources into a place where he's not even sure he's going to be alive to reap the dividends of whatever investment he has made. That's very, very strong point that needs to be addressed if we are going to come out of this economic quagmire. Then number three, we have to begin to intensify this battle against corruption and introduce a more transparent way of doing things. For instance, this National Social Register, upon which a minister is being accused, oh, you are transferring money to the individual, is shrouded in secrecy. Why don't we put up all the list of persons, local government by local government, town by town, ward by ward, on a portal, electronic portal, where I can go to my own state and my own local government and my own ward, when you put the names of those who are not qualified there, I'll be the first person to shout. People in my village are going to shout, and those names are going to remove, be removed. And that same register also influences the register they use for the basic care, care provision fund, which takes about 1% of the consolidated revenue fund of the federal government. So if you clean out the National Social Register, it will also help us to clean out the register that people used to benefit from free medical services under the Basic Health Care Provision Fund. And then all the other sectors, whether it's state fund, whether it's soil, introduce more transparency. There shouldn't be a reason where somebody will be managing billions of Naira, and yet he believes that nobody should know. He's managing it as if to say it is on his own. And the process of transparency, the process of opening up and cleaning, it has to be above board. We've been complaining. I mean, look at the last situation. The chief justice is either bringing his daughter or daughter-in-law, again, after he's put his son and everything, to become a judge. Is it the only family in Nigeria qualified to be judges? And everybody's talking. And the man doesn't send anybody. He doesn't care. He's not bothered about the scenario. And so that's an unfortunate situation where we have ourselves today. I am talking because I'm not playing politics and being straight to the fact we need to call out men, even in the highest level of positions. Otherwise, if we don't call them out and call a spade a spade, we will continue this with my rule. Okay, let me, let, let me start winding down by, by going to Mr. Dagunro. Um, Mr. Mr. Joe Femi Dagunro, how would you want to wrap it up? from your end suggest if you have suggestions uh but let's keep it within a minute uh mr Daguno. is he still there oh okay uh, okay uh, uh ambassador ambassador Ibrahim wire how would you want to wrap it yes. up how would you want to wrap it up please well actually the way i i really want to wrap it up is um I, I want to emphasize that if really we are to be serious, yeah, to the inward, uh, even before going to a long term uh, maybe strategy of uh, addressing this kind of economic challenges, there are immediate ones. Immediate ones, like I say, nobody knows about the money that is being recovered by the EFCC, what is actually being used for. Nobody can tell you how much money. The only thing that you hear in the news that so so amount of money has been recovered, so so amount of money, so so properties have been recovered. But nobody can tell you what exactly has been recovered and how the money is charged. Uh, and uh, and Ambassador, being. Ambassador, you don't think yes. you don't think some of these announcements are hypes, uh, uh, meant to just make people feel that some of these agencies are working when it is obvious that uh, they, they may indeed be, uh, you know, quote unquote, as a friend of mine would say, in, on street pal in street parlance, they may be treating with the allots or the prostitutes. The, these things may just no, be. No, right. it's not like that. They that is one of the accountability actually practices that we require. Even the EFCC themselves, they need to account to the people. They need to really be account, 
accounting to the people. They need to be accountable. Whatever they do, if they recover that money, if it is, if they channel the money to the city or something like that, let people know and let the federal government come to tell the people that this is exactly what they are doing the money for. That is it. And like what the Sunusi, Lamir Sunusi was saying, the 14 AM of Kano, he was asking the NMPC that where is the Dallas? Now that there is no subsidy. So where is that money? The money that is actually meant for the subsidy is not there now. So where is where it is all replacement? The replacement should be well, seen uh, and it should okay. be in Dallas. So where are the Dallas? That is actually one of the things that we should be asking and the the agency should be accountable to that. Should be should be accountable to the citizens. Okay. Uh, we really have to we really have to wrap it up at this juncture. Uh, gentlemen, you have been wonderful resource uh, persons. Uh, you've added some great value to, to the brand of the program. We really appreciate you. We look forward to some of the opportunities soon to engage with you. Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. This is Thank you we, very much. This is where we wrap it for today. I am Bola Oba. Have a good evening.